Okay. Day one in Milan. Let's go. But, my God, I thought we were never going to get home last night. I never experienced such a stressful time in a hotel. Um, as you probably have seen in the footage already, the the. expected to have such an awful time on an airport experience let me tell you the story so for some reason like I had said in the previous footage and I definitely know I had jinxed myself I was not there three hours ahead of time because I was at work I couldn't get there um, and then we got stuck in a check-in because Ryanair are there if you know what I'm saying. And apparently because myself and Thomas paid for the tickets separately, it was an extra 30 euro on top of that to link the two tickets together. Even though they saw that I was 25 year old with a 15 year old and I was taking care of him. So that's the first thing. 30 euro down already. Then wait times to get to security was an hour. And we were meant to have fast track, but the fast track line was actually going slower than the normal line which was crap, but the people at Fast Track were really nice to us and they offered us a refund if we wanted it and they said that we could contact them and we'd get a refund on our Fast Track ticket, which is very, very nice. But then after that, once we got to security, literally it was like the five minute bell, we knew our gates were closing in five minutes, we were rushing. So we asked a few very, very kind people to skip the line. People were very generous, they let us go. Um, there was one particular family with a dad and you know the way that some of the dads look really stern and you're like this fella's not gonna let me pass he was like why what's wrong are you okay and I was like yeah our, t our, our gate's closing right now and he goes never ask then once we got to security um, of course mine and Thomas's bags got pulled over I had forgotten that I had liquids in my bag 100% my fault Thomas got picked for random selection and I was panicking because I told Thomas, run on ahead, hold the gate, I'm coming. And I begged your man behind me, I was like, please, 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 can I just have my two bags for now? I'm really, really sorry. And he goes, everyone's waiting, love, fuck off. But then some lovely woman who was obviously going, she had an Italian accent, so she's obviously going to either one of the flights. She's like, no, her gate is closing now. Can you not just take her now? And he was like, well, she hasn't picked up one single thing. Like, I got automatic vibes of me on lunchtime to eat, trying to get the kids to pick up rubbish. And I was like, but I've literally, while I've been waiting, I've been so nervous that I literally just been putting the bags, boxes away, like, because, you know, the way there's, they come in the boxes and they put the boxes away. I was like, I have been doing that. Can you please do something? He's like, no, love, no. And I was like, okay, fine, fine. I understand you're under pressure, fine. Having a panic attack all the way this is going on. He then was like, all right, love. And then he got mine. But then I had to stick around because I was trying to get Thomas's bag. But then I felt like, okay, he's already given out to me once. I'm not going to ask him again. So we were waiting for Thomas's bag and then we legged it. So our security was 10 minutes from the gate. So I legged it as fast as I could. But I was having a panic attack while this was going on. So breathing was not my thing. So I couldn't run very well. So if anyone saw me in the airport yesterday, no, he didn't. And then once we finally got there, Thomas had told me that they had closed the gate and they weren't letting us in panic and I begged the woman I was like please please is there any way you can let us on we need to get over there like, obviously I know I sound really stupid because obviously people are going over to go back to their families we're just going for a holiday but I was like please is there any way you can let us on and she's like no go back to the check-in desk and I got so angry and I started screaming I was like I was like I was just like but your check-in desk was the reason we were late because like the line was like an hour long in that line for check-in alone and their system was down the night before so that's why I couldn't get Thomas on uh, as well with the linking of the tickets. So that was what the issue was. Very, very stressful. I'm So then got on the flight. That was fine. Got off the flight. Yeah, this story just never seems to end. We got off the flight, got into security. My passport went through fine. So I went through the little gates first. No one had told me that Thomas's passport was not going through fine. He had to be put to another line. I was five minutes running around looking for this boy because he didn't have service. So we were like panicking trying to find him. He was petrified because um, he thought he was going to get sent home. And he was in with a load of people from another flight. So there was one Irish lad in front of him. And fair play to the girlfriend who I was chatting to for the Irish lad to keep an eye on Thomas. Thank you very, very much. Um, yeah, we were petrified. Then with all that, Thomas was another hour waiting in the line. We missed our bus. 
another bus came though thankfully very quickly that wasn't too bad then we had about a 10 minute walk to our hotel and then the hotel only had one boy on for check-in we were waiting an hour to get into the apartment hotel room to say we slept well was just an understatement an understatement so what is it like in milan right now let me show you so it's very very clear skies heat wave is approaching it's going to be 22 degrees today and i am not prepared for any of you watching obviously of course i know i'm wearing this yesterday but um i realized that the cover over that i had planned to wear is really really creased and disgusting so moral story is always bring clothes you can't crease so probably what i'll do is if it gets much hotter I will go and I'll just buy another, I'll buy a top or something, a baggy t-shirt or something instead of this outfit. But, um, yeah, in case you're looking at me like, oh, she wore it yesterday. It's clean. Thank you very, very much. I'm stressed out actually retelling that story again. I'm actually like, and I feel really bad because like, it's my first time bringing Thomas somewhere by ourselves. What a crap start. But I have a feeling Milan is going to make up for it. Today's plan is we've got tickets for the hop on, hop off bus. We're going to just probably sit on that for a while, get our bearings of the town, of the city, and we, we will climb the Duomo as well. Uh, I've been warned loads of times that it's really difficult, so it's obviously higher than the Ark, I think. The people who are telling me are relatively like either old or unfit, so we should be fine. There's nowhere, there's no elevator on the Duomo, but the pictures we're going to get are going to be classed, so that'll be exciting. We are staying in the Ibis Hotel in Milan Central. Milano Central. Uh, Central. I'll get there eventually, I promise. And it's nice, it's grand, it's actually, it's three stairs, but like it's really nice, forward thinking, very spacious, nice designs, nice area. Um, we're only a 10 minute walk from the Central Station. Ciao, mi chiamo Katie, io sono irlandese. Sono insegnata. Um, por favor, un cappuccino e un caffè latte. See, I'm mixing up my French now. Shit, I'm mixing up all my languages. I'm cursing a lot more on this. I've got some editing job to do. So with the drama of last night behind us, we headed out into Milan. It was a very easy and straightforward journey to the metro station. It was literally just next door. And that was definitely something we had prioritized when we were booking this hotel, that we were either close to the metro station or we would be close to the city center. The metro was straightforward and very cheap. It was only two euro for a ticket and it was three stops away from the Duomo. Everything was very well signposted. We knew from our research on Google and on TikTok that we were looking for the M3 line and on either side of the platforms there was a very detailed map telling us where we were going and what was the next stop so it was very straightforward very helpful and kind of puts our Lewis systems to shame So our next stop was to get on that hop on, hop off bus and this time we were going with City Sightseeing. We had pre-ordered our tickets and it was another 24 hour ticket. If you followed my France vlog you will understand what I mean and what I love about the hop on, hop off bus situations. But this one was 13 euro each and it was for the full day and in Milan there are five different lines for these hop on, hop off buses that you can go for different parts. For example the first time we went on it it was taking us through the more modern section of Milan and the second time we went on we went on the more historical route which brought us around by the palace and also each line had a different level of commentary with it as well so there was something for everyone say Milan 
is not the city in Italy that has the most things to see. The Duomo is definitely one of the attractions you cannot miss when you go to Milan. We decided that we were going to take it one step further and climb to the top of the Duomo. Now, there's a few things with this that were really difficult. The lines were excruciating. We had decided to go on the hop on hop off bus first and then go to the Duomo when really we probably should have done it the other way around because the lines were crazy. We waited about half an hour to get in and tickets had to be bought before you went in. You needed a green pass and you needed to have all your bags searched. So if you are bringing a bag, be prepared for someone to search you and pat you down. Now I will say for me and Thomas personally, we didn't find the stairs in the Duomo to be as hard as the stairs in the Arc de Triomphe, but they were still difficult nonetheless. So there is an option, whereas there wasn't in the Arc de Triomphe, that you would pay extra to get the lift up and down. We enjoyed it when we got up there we got some great views however I will say if I was to pick a negative side of it we did expect a bit better views from the front we did expect to be able to see from the front which you aren't you go from either side and you see either side so I would suggest if you can take the entrance that lets you see the right hand side of the Duomo that's the right hand side if you were standing right in front of it however you still get a great view when we got up to the very top of the Duomo it was lovely we saw some lovely things we had a panoramic view but like I said the front of it was blocked off by the structure of the building but all in all whether you're religious or not you can really appreciate the architecture in this building and why not climb it get your steps in go on why not you're eating enough pasta in Italy anyway <laughs> On the hunt for souvenirs. It's proving to be a little bit more difficult than we had planned. Maria, I'm looking directly at you. We're back on the hop on hop off bus, but this time we're going on a different route. This one's the more historic one, so I'm really looking forward to it. And we've walked the length of the Duomo area looking for souvenirs, and we got them. Hooray! Remember, if you are beside a historical monument like the Duomo or like the palace or anything along those lines, this food is going to be more expensive. The souvenirs are going to be more expensive. Don't go to the first souvenir shop that you see, ladies and gentlemen. Go and look around. You would do it at home. Why not do it on holidays, okay? Be very careful because a lot of the times, especially with eating, a lot of the stuff is an add-on. When they give you the breadsticks, the breadsticks are going to cost money. If they give you the box of bread, they're going to make sure you pay for the bread. And also watch out for something as well. When you ask for water, they will always give you sparkling water. And I have to go and ask my Italian students, what is that about? Because in Ireland, obviously, when we say water, we mean still water, but they automatically assume it's sparkling water. So just be careful for that. Anyway. 